All right. So we've now talked about all three types of time, and keeping those straight is really important as we study relativity. Our next step, then, is to apply this to a particular example. And I'm going to refer to the increasingly outdated reference to the Battlestar Galactica uh, TV show. Uh, I suppose by putting President Roslin in here, I'm already implicitly saying that it's the recent reboot. Uh, and doing this, I can look at this, and I, I'm just going to outline a scenario for you. Uh, I've got uh, this derelict space station that's been discovered, and Captain Apollo is exploring the space station. Meanwhile, Starbuck is flying her Viper spacecraft around in sweeps, looking to see if any Cylons are coming to mess with people, mess with the spacecraft with this the, with the lost space station. And so Starbuck is flying around in circles on on uh, recon missions. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and label Starbuck's departure as event A, and Starbuck's return to the space station here as event B. So those will be the two events we care about. Meanwhile, of course, as in the show, the Battlestar Galactica and its ragtag collection of uh, colonial refugee spaceships are all traveling through space searching for the lost planet Earth. And along the way, uh, they're traveling at a constant velocity, and sensibly enough, they have synchronized their clocks so that all the ships in the fleet have synchronized clocks as they move in their own inertial reference frame at velocity v compared to this, uh, this space station. So... Uh, just for example, we've got the Galactica itself going along here, and we've got this spaceship here belonging to President Roslin uh, at some other position along the way. And just by coincidence, isn't it convenient, President Roslin's spaceship is passing right by the space station here, this derelict station, at event A, at that moment. And when Starbuck is getting back and returns at event B, that's when the Galactica happens to be passing by. Isn't that handy? So, okay, what I want to do is talk about each of the three types of time we discussed earlier. I want to talk about, I want to first ask, who in this system measures a coordinate time between event A and event B? They may be different coordinate times, but who in here can measure a coordinate time between those two things? And, okay, think about it for a second. Coordinate time is always measured in a single inertial reference frame, measured by someone who is... A, See, from their own perspective, sitting still, or someone who's moving at constant velocity who experiences no acceleration, but it may be a team effort between multiple clocks in the same reference, play, reference frame. So, okay, the simplest example of someone measuring coordinate time right now is Apollo, Apollo between A and B. To measure the time at event A, you have to be present at event A, and sure enough, Apollo's right there when Starbuck leaves at event A. So, he marks that down, and then a bit later, Starbuck gets back at event B, and Apollo marks that down. From his perspective, he's sitting still, he's in an inertial frame, so certainly Apollo, Apollo definitely is measuring a, a coordinate time between those two in the coordinate system that's at rest relative to the space station. To find another measurement of coordinate time between event A and B in this story, we can turn to the ragtag band of uh, colonial refugees, and we can say, hey, look, at event A, President Roslin is right there to note down the time on her synchronized clock, and she'll note down that time as she passes by the space station as Starbuck leaves. That'll be time A for the fleet's reference frame. And then, hey, at event B, the Galactica has moved into place and is, in, and is right there to be able to note down the time when Starbuck returns. And so the folks on the Galactica will write down their synchronized time and at that moment. And then President Rosalind and the folks on the Galactica can compare notes and subtract off the and subtract TB minus TA and find a coordinate time there. So I will go ahead and say that the fleet as a whole will measure the pro will measure a coordinate time between A and B. Now again, I expect, in general, that the coordinate time that Apollo measures will be a different number than the coordinate time that the fleet measures, because they're in different inertial reference frames. And so, in general, we expect them to measure different coordinate time differences. Okay, next question. Who measures a proper time between A and B, between Starbucks' departure and Starbucks' arrival? Well, 
Okay, proper time, remember, is time measured by a specific observer. Uh, elapsed time for a specific observer, someone who is present at both events. Who's present at both events? Well, President Rosalind's only there for event A, the Galactic is only there for event B, so neither one of them can be an observer measuring proper time between those two events. On the other hand, Apollo's there for both events. Apollo can measure proper time, so... Apollo is definitely one of them, measures proper time between the two, because, again, he's present for event A, he's present for event B, and he can just keep track of his watch the whole time. The other person who can measure a proper time between the two events is Starbuck, because Starbuck is there for event A, she's on the Viper that leaves, and she's there for event B, because she gets back at that moment. So Starbuck also measures a proper time. Again, I expect that those two proper times will be different numbers. They'll, you will get different measurements for the two, because the motion of Apollo and the motion of Starbuck are not the same. They're not in the same inertial reference frame, they're not in the same... Uh, they follow different paths between those two. Proper times from different observers are generally different. Finally, is there anyone in this story who measures the space-time interval between event A and event B? And if so, who is it? Well, okay, there's actually an easy way to do this since we've already answered the first two questions. The space-time interval is the unique time measurement in relativity that is both a coordinate time by some inertial observer and a proper time by a single observer who is present for both events. Look, Apollo is in both lists, so Apollo, Apollo gets to be uh, gets to be the person whose watch reads the unique space-time interval between event A and event B. None of the others satisfy all the criteria you need. Again, you can think about this from the perspective of Apollo and just answer this directly. We say, is there an observer who, from their perspective, is at rest? and is nevertheless present for both event A and event B. It's Apollo. That's true for Apollo, and so Apollo measures the space-time interval. The nice thing about the space-time interval is it is something that everyone can agree on. Even if we have, for example, a coordinate time measurement by the fleet, they can, if they need to, work out in terms of, if they also know the distance between the Galactica and President Rosalind's ship, if they know that distance, then they can use those, that information and their time difference, their coordinate time difference, they can use that to compute the unique space-time interval. So you don't need to have someone sitting there on the space station to, to compute what that space-time interval would be if someone were there. But uh, if you actually want to measure it, it's got to be someone who sees themselves at rest and is present for both events. In this case, we really have a simple case that looks here that looks like that. In other scenarios that we might set up, you might need to have a story about someone who was traveling from one place to another at constant speed and happened to get there just in time for you, know, you leave for during the birthday of the emperor and you arrive at the distant star system right when the eclipse happens or something. And then if you go constant velocity, that would be a a that would be a good uh, space time interval measurement. But in general, in this case. We've got, our, we've got our three situations. Only Apollo counts as a space-time interval, but there are other people measuring proper time or coordinate time. And again, in relativity, these different ways of thinking about time, it's important to keep them straight. It's important not to confuse one with the other. But once you get it, it makes it, it'll make your study of relativity much simpler.